What's up, ladies and gentlemen, my brothers and my sisters? Wait, that's your part, right? Sure is. Oh, okay. Y'all know what's up. I got the goat with me in the studio. Sir. What's going on, my brother? Man, I've been blessed, man. God's he's been good. He has. Yes, sir. He has. He he really came through for you, man. It was like three months ago. We weren't having this conversation yeah. and now we're able to to smile and mm-hmm. really see the goodness and the the mercy, man, of mm-hmm. God for yes, real, sir. bro. So Mr. New Zealand. Yes, sir. <laughs> we might have to go from goat to Mr. New Zealand on my man. So you're pretty much gonna go on a trip. Yes, sir. Mission trip. To New Zealand. And we pretty much in I say three months. Yeah, it was yeah, about like three three two months around that time, yes, sir. Yeah. We seen God come through with almost five K. Yeah. I mean five K in three well, months. Plus plus a flight, so <laughs> Yeah. We seen the favor of God. Mm. We seen the love of God, just mercy. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And I say that because it's easy for me to look at you right now mm-hmm. and say, man, this young man has really got favor, has allowed the Lord to come through and the Lord open up doors to help this man raise 5000 for mm-hmm. a burden that the Lord has put on your heart. But through every great, story there's always a back yes sir a backstory one that's hidden in church what we like to call is a testimony yes sir and i would like for you to share what led you to this day like how did we get here because i know it's just you don't wake up one day mm-hmm. and then oh you got a burden yeah. what was the ultimate backstory yes, to this i love that question um a lot of times we in the bible we like to mention their 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 rises their not we're we're not worried about the falls. We're worried about the rise. You know, they're like a bouncy ball. Best example to use for this: bouncy ball falls, but then it goes ten times higher than it was. Right? Yeah. <clears throat> so my fall, I mean, uh, I fell, and that's one thing that we're not really we we're not really talking about much. But I love testimonies. That's one of my favorite things in the world. It, it, it motivates you. Like it gives you that. Okay, well, I'm not the only one that messed up. So you know, growing up, I, I was raised in church. I was raised in here, and you were like, "Oh, that young man's gonna be so great one day. He's gonna be serving God." No, that's that that I I fail just like I feel like a lot of other young people have or will. And I'm not saying that in a bad way, but falling is scars are very good, you know, because I mean, it shows you what God's brought you. You're right here, man. What's up with my grandpa with the chicken coop? I got cut up, and I still remember that. Yeah. But so my um my fall was I was in 2019. My grandma passed away, and I I. Got angry at God. I was I was very bitter, and I uh, started smoking nicotine vapes and stuff. And I was just like, "Man, God took away my he 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 made me sad. So I want to make him sad, you know." Yeah. And which is not something a lot of people should be doing, but that's what I did. I took that route. I was like, "Okay, well, let me make God sad." And that was one of the biggest mistakes I made. I um I began to fall into that trap with that and pornography. And a lot of people don't like talking about that, but yes, I fell into that too. I was like, "All right, well, I'm in this. I'm I'm in the mud." And then a powerful message was preached. I believe it was TYC. And I still had a vape with me too. Like I was, I was at a church conference and I had one with me. But um, I remember he preached a mighty word and it it shook me. Like it, it really turned my life around. And I was like, okay, can't do this anymore. And I remember it started with a group chat. Like it was what Los Hombres de Dios. Remember that? It was you, Elliot. Oh me. yeah, yeah. yeah. I was sending scriptures every day. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, that. so yes. I could like let everybody know. Okay, well, I'm still reading. I'm still studying. I mean, that was a moment for all of us, dude. Mm-hmm. That was like that was the first TYC. This was like after COVID, so mm-hmm. NAYC that year was kind of uh, virtual. Yeah, I believe online, and it was an experience for me too because mm-hmm. you weren't. You know, I came back and there was people that I knew that weren't in church, and I was pretty much doing the same thing with them, you know, yeah. sending them them scriptures. Sorry mm. to interrupt. No, no, I know good. what you're talking about. That was yes, like, that, that was some transformation right there. Yes, bro. sir. Yeah, and I'm, I'm thankful for that, too. I'm thankful for, a lot of people don't like saying this, but I'm thankful for what, what COVID bring, like a very, um, what's the word, an understanding, like, okay, well, you're gonna either going to live off of God from emotion, from going to rally to rally, or you're really going to die out to this. I call those the con- conference junkies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And a lot of sometimes that's how we start out. We start off with being a junkie, and then we start becoming an addict. That addict's good, man. <laughs> I'm addicted to this. I mean, I was addicted to smoking vapes for I think it was about two years, but 
man, when I started smoking on Jesus and I started getting in that word, <laughs> man, I, I became an addict. I'm like scratching for it. Like I need to tell somebody about it today. Yeah. I can't keep this inside of me. Like Jeremiah, fire shut up in my bones. Can't keep this within. I gotta, I gotta let it out, man. I gotta, I gotta tell you about it. I gotta tell your mama about it, your sister. I gotta, <laughs> I gotta tell everybody. So, I mean, that's, I mean, I'm not gonna say I didn't fall after that. After the TYC, I came back and I was like, okay, well, still, let me, I kind of started going through the motions again. I was like, okay, well, all right, let me keep doing this. Let me keep doing this. Keep my standards right. And then still wasn't died out to it. And then, and then I wasn't smoking nothing anymore, but still kind of like living from rally to rally. And then about, Whenever I started actually studying the Bible, reading the Bible, falling in love with it, let that be a mirror, a reflection of how our life should be. Yeah. So that's that's where I let it become. Let it become a reflection of how I need to be. Like I shouldn't be doing certain things. Like the Bible says not to. I shouldn't be uh, gossiping. Like the Bible says not to. Shouldn't be lying. The Bible says not to. Shouldn't I have another God because the Bible says not to. So I started. That was not checking myself. Okay, because other times we need a hell, fire, and brimstone message to, to shake us up. <laughs> and I was like, okay, God, let me get those every day so that I can get shaken up. And then now you just got to keep it inside. Okay, well, I got something I'm living for. I got people I got to reach. So this ain't gonna stay inside of me. So that's that's how it was. And then I remember my first year living for God. Like it was, no, it was it was what a couple months living for God, and then church hurt trying to come. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of people don't like talking about that. And just like uh, the scripture we're going with today is Matthew twenty eight nineteen. Yes, sir. It says, uh, "Go and make disciples." Is what Jesus says. And if anybody, I felt like should have shouldn't have went, it should have been me. Honestly, I could have been in my pity party saying, "Okay, well, God, I was living for you, but some of your disciples came after me. I ain't gonna let that stop me." Like it was, um, I want to say it was maybe like two months living right for God. Uh, there was a uh. Young man, I reached out to. I thought he was. I, I looked up to his mentor. Yeah, I thought he was a mentor in my life. And <clears throat> then randomly, he was like, "We were about to go to a rally that same night." He messaged me. He was like, "Don't message me again, or I'll contact your pastor." And I was just living like I still had the joy of the Lord. Like I was just, I was died out to it. Kind of like how you start off at, when you first get the Holy Ghost again. Like you're, you're died out. Like okay, I got to do this. I got to do this. And that's whenever church started came, and I was just like, man, I remember that same night after they talked. I was just like. Like the, I guess the words he said kind of just threw me off. I was like, all right, well, I can just hit here, you know? And I'll, that's how it was. I was The church kind of got to me for a little bit, but then I had a mindset change. I was like, you know what? During Whenever the rapture happens and whenever I see God, judgment day, I can't say church hurt is the reason why I went to hell because that's my fault now. Yeah. Because there's a bump in the road, yes, but are you still going to go down that road that's going to lead you to success or are you going to turn around and go, to the easy route, the route that's not not good. So, I mean, came in and then yeah, I felt like that was really attacking my ministry in that point too. Like this is whenever I just got back into church. I, and then I was okay. Well, let me let me start growing in this. Let me start growing in this. And then church hurt came. And then I was like, well, I don't know. I don't know if I was called to preach anymore. Because I mean, God, this man's supposed to be anointed. Like is he is anointed, anointed man of God. Yeah, he's supposed to be in, in leadership. Mm. Um, I remember that night. Yeah. And I, I remember it vividly. And what people don't understand is that you hear these great men of God that get behind the pulpit, anointing of God is, it, is what we like to call it in church, falls on them, and they're real bold. Mm. But majority of us ain't. Mm. So a lot of them will be like, oh, well, you know, they're just words. I let, us, I let them slide off. Majority of us don't. Yeah, You know, probably 89% of your congregation ain't built that way. Mm. And so... You try to shake it off, and I remember there was a there was a thing at you. Should I handle it physically? Yeah, you know what I'm saying because there's emotions in this mm-hmm. thing now, and it's especially hurt, man. Hurt doesn't know what really and truly hurt doesn't know what to do. Yeah, hurt wants to be healed, but at the same time, I don't want you to touch me. Yeah, you know what I'm saying like, um, I remember my finger incident. I mean, there was so much pain mm. from it, and I knew I was gonna go to the doctor, but mm. I didn't want the doctor poking around at my hand because I knew. It was going to bring more pain. Yeah. But I know I was hurt. So that's the thing about hurt. What a lot of people don't realize is there's gonna always going to be an emotional side to hurt. Mm-hmm. And there's always going to be a spiritual side to hurt. And, of course, the best thing for you is to get your emotions lined out and to uh, allow the spirit to do the healing yeah. for you. But I, re- I remember that. Um, A lot of folks don't know either. Same thing happened to me, man. I, I remember um, I'm in the back. Mm. at church and 
there's an individual that was actually um, high up in the church, kind of very similar mm. to what comes up to me and says, you know, pastor would like to use you, but you're too arrogant. Mm. Now, what individuals don't know at that time, even that individual is, I used to be a rapper. Yeah. So I was very prideful. Mm. Like it was my music, my kingdom, my money, mm. my jewelry, my clothes. I was very prideful. Yeah. And so when I came to God, like I wouldn't even think I, I didn't want to be a preacher mm -hmm. because I was scared that I was going to fall under the pride category yes, where it's going to be about me. So when they came up, bro, what I did, I will encourage anyone to do. Mm -hmm. And so I went home. I didn't eat. I had got off of work, took a shower, went to church. Mm. I didn't have time to eat, so I was going to eat after. You can ask my wife. I didn't. She cooked the meal. Probably was mad at me because I didn't eat. I went in prayer. Mm -hmm. I went in prayer, and I said, Lord, if this is in me, because I see, I mean, this mm -hmm. is an individual that, you, as you're saying, you look up to, an anointed mm -hmm. individual. And so I'm all like, Lord, if there's any arrogance in me, is there any pride in me, like, mm -hmm. help me. And I didn't know how to deal with it. So the Bible says, blessed is the man that walking not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor sure. standeth the way of the sinner, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Mm -hmm. So what I did, instead of, and um, I encourage any listener, any young person, get wise counsel. Yeah, yeah. I say that because for some odd reason, I'm a human being like you, for some odd reason, your human nature will open up to people who ain't there to help you before it does to people who will help you. Yeah, that is true. And people like they don't want they don't want to admit it, but mm -hmm. it's coughing the truth, baby. We're gonna speak the truth. Mm -hmm. So I talked to individuals mm -hmm. that were wise counsel. Said, Hey, this individual came up to me. I wasn't trying to gossip. I was mm -hmm. really trying to figure out if I'm arrogant, please help me not to be like Yeah. And so these individuals, the, you know, the wise counsel end up telling me they're all like I don't see it. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't see it. And I'm all like, okay. And I was all, I just, I just want to make sure because I don't want to be, I don't want to be taken that way. And to be honest with you, I never got an apology, but mm -hmm. I wasn't looking for an apology. Yeah. Because you're right about that. I can't allow a young listener, young sister, young brother, the oppositions, the ops, however you want to view them, the enemy is job is supposed to stop yeah. you. That's their job. That's their obligation. Your obligation as a Christian is not to let them. Yeah. You keep living this walk and you keep walking this walk and you continue carrying that cross on your back because your enemy just desires you to take that cross down because mm -hmm. you think it's going to get easier, man. If there's no, if there's no resistance, I'm doing something wrong, yeah, bro. For that, real. That is true. <laughs> I, you know, I got to have hate. Not everybody's mm -hmm. supposed to love me. Not everybody loves Jesus. You know what I'm saying? But go ahead, brother. I just wanted to share that. No, and thank you for that. Thank you for that. I feel like everybody needs to hear that. And uh, I wish to say it stopped there. Like, I wish to say that that individual and me stopped there. But, you know, I made an apology. I uh, apologized to the man. I said, well, I'm sorry if I did do anything, which, looking back, I don't think I did. But if I did, I mean, I apologize for it. Um. And it, it got to the point where, like, it, he didn't even want to pray for me, bro. Like, I remember, like, I would, uh, something, you know how I was, I was good young people at the altar, they're like praying and get the little eye peeking. <laughs> yeah. like, like that, that's how I was. I was, I was, I was, I was, I was a peeker. <laughs> yeah, it's peeking. And then he, um, like he, he was like laying hands on everybody else. And then when he got to me, just kind of skipped, yeah, you skipped up, over huh? me. And I was just like, dang bro. All right. But I was just like, all right, well, I mean, another thing to add. Right. But I was like, all right, well, I should let that go. And then, and then like not to make it, not to make it worse, but to make it better, add a cherry on top of that. Um, I remember God, he gave me a prophetic word for this individual and then told you, I was like, well, that's what God told me. And then, uh, then I walked away, told him then the next Sunday, well, no, it was the next day, it is next day, next, next day, day, prophet came to the church and he confirmed what I told him. So I feel like that confirmed two things, his miracle and that I was called by God. You know, that's kind of just how, it, that's how I felt it was. And then not only was he there to see that the prophetic word that God gave me to, for him come to pass. But he's seen a prophetic word of God come upon me. Yeah. And you can't you can't just let that go because he uh the prophet, Brother Miller, oh amazing man of God. Yeah. And he gave me a prophetic word. He said, How old are you? I said, 17. The, the same day till I was talking to my youth pastor. I said, Bro, 
Like, I know it's called a God to preach. I mean, he's giving me messages after messages after messages, but I don't know in what field. I said, but, you know, missionaries are looking really cool right now. And that's how I wanted to be a missionary. And then uh, he said, how old are you? I said, 17. He said, have you thought about global missions? And me and my youth pastor, we locked eyes. We're like, like, did he just say that? <laughs> yeah. And there was a praying that happened. He prayed over me. So he's prayed over me. And then the youth just started praying over me. And it was, I'm never going to forget that. But I know that God ordained that to happen for a reason. Yeah. Not just to give me the confirmation, but to give him the confirmation. Okay, well, I'm still going to use him. Even though you may have things against him, I'm still going to use him. Yeah. And that a lot of people don't know about that about me. They say, oh, he's a smiling young man. Like, he, he's like he's he's good. He's a little skipper. Like, he, he's getting things around. But there's still some pain behind the smile, you know? Yeah. There's progress a, behind the preacher. What a lot of people don't understand, too, about Josh is we, we love to preach about Peter. Mm-hmm. We love to compare ourselves to Peter. Yeah. We don't want a Peter. Mm-hmm. Now, I, I tell people this all the time. Josh is my Peter. <laughs> like, for real, though. This dude is, he's something else. He's not, people don't understand Josh because they don't understand Peter. Mm-hmm. They like to preach it, but they don't want somebody living it. And that's what I'm saying is, Josh is very, one of those passionate individuals, got a zeal and willing to go take charge mm. i said we read about it and we oh you know we look at the acts 238 deal oh peter 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 but when we get around the individual like that i was talking with brother uh marcus antonio yeah he told me about that and i told him i told him the same thing i said i love josh josh is a is a peter and i told him the exact same thing man you hear you hear i don't know how many great messages come off of peter mm-hmm. but no nobody want one in their youth group because yeah. they get a job. What a lot of y'all don't know is me and Josh didn't have the very greatest relationship in the beginning. Mm. Like me and Josh bumped heads. Me and Josh, um, I openly disrespected this young man because he openly disrespected yeah, me. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, all right. We're like bulls. But uh, yeah, and and there's two things from that. I didn't know he was hurt for, first and foremost. Mm. This was during the time that he was hurt, and I didn't know that. Um. Just because you got somebody in leadership does not mean that they're just, they know everything in the mm-hmm. spirit. Oh, they know, they don't. I didn't. At this time, I didn't know Josh was hurt. I didn't know that he, it, it, was, it was a hard deal when his grandma died. I really didn't know all that. I just knew that there was a young man that was, that was really trying to test. I'll say it for you, bro. <laughs> he was playing games, you know. <laughs> there was a young man that was really trying to play. So, um, it was all God, though. I mean, that's what. Whenever the Bible says, and I'm not trying to justify my wrong because I apologize. What I did is is I corrected something in the wrong manner. And so I couldn't even have church. I was a Wednesday night. We had youth that, on Wednesday at that time. It was a Wednesday night. I couldn't even worship God on Sunday correctly. So Wednesday comes, and before I started class, I said, you know what? I did something openly wrong, and I'm mm-hmm. going to fix it. And I apologized to him in front of everybody, the whole class. I said, man, I'm sorry. And, of course, that's when he's all like, man, brother, so at least I'm sorry. And it's, like, crazy because our relationship at that point just, like, mm-hmm. elevated. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It went from, you know, rivalries, mm-hmm. this being real. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It went from that to now this is this is my, you know, this is my Peter. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, this dude right here is, like, he's the real deal, man. I, I love this young man because, first and foremost, you know, we don't look at the gospel as a burden. We look at it as a lifestyle. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Exactly. This is what we do. You know what I mean? And this was the first young man when I told him, I said, hey, brother, I felt the Lord wants me to go, you know, pray right here at this uh this trailer park right mm-hmm. here. You down? I mean, this dude was like, yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> there was no, oh, let me pray or let me let me see. and Or there was no excuses. Like, like if he had already had that brewing and within him, he was just looking for somebody like, hey, let's go tear up the town together. Yes, sir. And so, I mean, I got respect for this individual, but whenever Jesus Christ says that offenses must come, now I mm-hmm. see. But if it wasn't for that moment, like, we wouldn't be right here. Yeah. We wouldn't be on this podcast together. We wouldn't be, you know, this year, one of my main goals is, is to promote Josh, like, everything, you know what I'm saying? So even in ministry, allowing them whatever opportunity that I can, you know, have Josh. Why? Because this is this is my my man right here. This is my brother. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? So definitely, um, do not allow offenses. You know, get get better. Don't get bitter, <laughs> yes, man. Sir. For real, for real. Um, 
But go ahead, Peter. <laughs> and there's and you have to choose one. It's either bitter or better, and there's no in between. You can't say, "Oh, I'm not bitter," and then you're like, "Yeah, I don't want to talk to that young man." No, you gotta choose one. You may not try to say, "Hey, this is what I'm going with," but your actions show it. You know. And I'm thankful for you, Bella. At least, and yeah, like he said, we we bumped heads. We didn't have like the smoothest relationship, but I'm thankful for how God brought it. Like this, I look up to this uh, my youth pastor as a mentor, more than a mentor. Like I, I want to follow in his footsteps, you know. And I, I'm very thankful for you. I very, I really am. And he, you took me under your wing. You're teaching me the ropes of ministry, how to even whenever I mess up, I'm thankful for you. Correction, I'm thankful for you. Like, bro, you're, you're tripping. Yeah. And I, I'm thankful for that because it, it keeps me my head on the sturdy. Because I understand, you know what I'm saying? I was I was just like you. You know, you get passionate about some things and you want to go take on the world. Mm -hmm. And you got to be like, you know, they call it a tunnel vision. Yeah. But tunnel vision is not the best vision to have in ministry. It's mm -hmm. a great vision you know, because it will drive you. Don't yeah. get me wrong. But tunnel vision, you're only locked in one thing, but you don't realize, like, it's kind of like if you're speeding through a light, you know, mm. um, that's why it's, it's sirens and things on police vehicles and uh, EMS is because to let people know, hey, we're coming through. Because mm -hmm. if they just drove by, it's going to be bad. Mm -hmm. And so that's what happens whenever you got that tunnel vision in ministry as a young man. You're not realizing that, hey, you're about to come to a four way and you're at a red light mm -hmm. and there's cars coming mm -hmm. more than one. And it's about to get ugly. And so that's where you need somebody to say, hey, hold on, hit your brakes. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, hey, hold on. It's kind of widen out that, that that tunnel vision. And now you can see on all sides and be like, oh, okay. And so sometimes you don't like it. I know. I know. I mean, there was, there was times I had to slow down. And, you know, Brother Waddy, I got uh, mad respect for Brother Waddy because Brother, Brother Waddy was very much one of those edification mm -hmm. in, in my life. You know, he mm -hmm. was one that would sit me down and, and let me know and, and mentor me. And he was pretty much the man that said the things that not, not everybody wants to say. And I'm not here making them. It's not a bad thing. It's not. Yeah. It's really not. You if you don't need to be hanging around with yes men. Yeah. That's straight up. If you want to grow, quit hanging around with yes men. Yeah. And he's not a yes man. He's And he didn't do it out of no malice or mm -hmm. envy or jealousy. He did it as a a, a mentor uh, he won't call himself an elder, but I don't know what else word to use. Young man. Uh, elder looking at a young man and saying, hey, there's roadblocks up here, mm -hmm. and I want to let you know about them before it's too late. And mm -hmm. that's all he was doing. It wasn't tearing me down. It wasn't cutting me down. And so I grew. And it, it, so there was, we had a young minister come in, and um, he didn't know no better. And so I told him, I said, look, I'm going to tell you about Brother Wadi, all right? Like, and I told him X, Y, Z, the way that he carries himself. And I said, but I'm telling you, because I don't want you to think because you can take it the wrong way. And he's not meaning that. And he, he told man, thank you, brother. So least, you know, yeah, you know, I said, no, I'm just letting them know because I know how it is coming mm -hmm. in here as a young minister and having him help me out. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't take it that way. And so, you know, don't hang around with yes, man. Uh, definitely. If you desire to be in ministry and want to be in ministry, get you, get around some people that are going to tell you no. Yeah. <laughs> Josh got told no a lot. <laughs> hey, all that's all. I still get told no. I told him no. I sh I'll share the screenshot. I told him no the other day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. Hey, no is very important. I, I love. I love the answer. Well, I like it. <laughs> I he don't love it. <laughs> yeah, Nobody like, love it. Like Nobody like it. love it. Yeah. Correction. It's 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 um it's good. I love correction. I love when someone's like, bro, that's not the best way to go. And I'm like, all right, I'll take your word for it. But you know, um, I would rather that happen than me fall down and cause I mean, I'm trying to be a minister, you know, yeah, minister and training at the church. And I'm beyond thankful for that. God, he's opened doors in that my ministry, uh, places where I, I know I don't deserve to be here. I don't deserve to be going on an AYC trip in four, five months, five yeah. months. I don't deserve any. And then God just like you, you can see like, even if you're saying, Oh, I don't believe in the God, you can see how the favor of God has fallen. It, it, speak about that. Yeah. please. Speak okay. about that, man. Cause so, you gotta hear it. Yeah, so it was about three months ago. We were going to get Dutch Bros. Um, and then we went to Burlington. I was talking to Bella Silly. So I said, bro, I mean, I just got this job. Um, but I don't have any of them. I have like 300 to my name. I need five. I need 2,000 by January, bro. And I was just like, bro, I might get a lottery ticket. No, I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, bro, I don't, I don't see how this is going to happen. I know God's called me here. I mean, like, as a kid, I'm going to talk about that real quick. As a kid, New Zealand's been on my heart since I was a child. Like I was watching Power Rangers as a, hey, 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 Power Rangers goes hard, bro. It goes hard, but I was watching Power Rangers, and then um, 
one one of the Rangers, he's like, man, I'm from New Zealand. He was talking about his backstory. I was like, dude, what is that? And then uh, I was talking to my parents. I was like, mom, I got to go here. And they were like, I don't even know where that's at, bro. And I was like, bro, I got to go here. And they, they just thought I was a kid just wanting to go explore somewhere. Yeah. And that's what I thought, too, until a couple of years later, I still, God put that, in my, this is whenever I got back into church and I was praying daily. God put New Zealand back on my heart. And I was like, you know, having dreams about this place that I haven't seen before. Like, I'm seeing places that I haven't seen. Like, I haven't seen those with my eyes, but I see it in the spiritual, if that makes sense. Yeah. And uh, I was just like, wow, that's it's insane how, like, I'm, I'm seeing dreams about this. And then I was prophesied over to uh, be global missions. And then two weeks later, uh, New Zealand is the first thing I see on AYC. And I was like, okay. Well, then then my aunt, uh, I was talking to her, I said, I got prophesied over. She said, I bet you the first place you're going is New Zealand. And I was like, okay. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, okay, yeah, that, that's what I was thinking. Too. I've been praying about this. And that's what God's put back in my spirit is New Zealand. And this is coming back into it. And then then the list comes out, I think, like a week later. And I was just like, that's, that's God ordained. After you get that amazing word, there's always going to be something that comes to knock you down. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And and then I would, you know, mine was the funds. So I was like, ooh, 5,000? That's a lot. I'd rather be 500, but 5,000? I don't got it. So then around December, right? Yeah, it was December. Yeah, and um, I, got, I was talking to you, and then you were like, God's going to come through. And I was talking to another mentor in my life, uh, Brother Bohan and Lamont. Met him at yeah. NAYC. And uh, then he, they sent me a care pack, well, like a care package type thing with a note saying, Joshua, we... Uh, we appreciate everything you do for us, and we want to see you grow, basically. And uh, it made me cry when I got that note because it, it just shows that God's favor. And then a friendship that I built up over two two months, God turned into a blessing. Yeah. Uh, if you haven't got one yet, yeah, you gotta you gotta get, see you it. get that living proof of a loving God. Shout out to Beyond Blessed. Yeah. Um. Uh, this right here, they're donating a percentage of their sales to my mission trip, which is like insane favor. Like, yeah. Like, uh, I met these people maybe three months ago in July, and then I get a package you know, that I wasn't expecting. This was when I was having a bad day as well. Like, even though I'm in the ministry, I was having a bad day. I was kind of grumpy. <laughs> and uh, Jojo was like, hey, bro, you got a package in. I was like, just throw it on my bed. And then he said, like, you got another package. And I was like, I'm only expecting one. So give me the other one. And I seen those Beyond Blessed, and I was just like, I already had a smile on my face. I was like, they sent me a free one. Little did I know that I got a note saying that they're going to help with that. And they donated a good amount to my mission trip. And um, then the favor of the Lord started happening like crazy. A thousand dollars donation came in, then hundreds of dollars. Like people walking into the the dry cleaners, tipping a hundred dollars, two hundred dollars. This doesn't just happen at a dry cleaner. Yeah, I'm not. At I'm not. Dry, yeah. yeah, I'm not serving food to nobody. I'm not a waiter giving them their clothes and taking their clothes in. And the favor of God just hits. Like it's. I think uh, in total from the, the tip jar, I want to say it was about a thousand two hundred. Because a guy play, uh, paid for my plane ticket, too, as well, which kind of I'm including in that. Yeah. So it's it's the favor of God. It came through. And I know it sounds like a a fairy tale, but it wasn't. So when we got back from NAYC, that first Saturday is when we started doing Hitting Our City. Yeah. And pretty much if you follow my personal account on IG, you will know that the GOAT's been with me pretty much all those Saturdays. Mm. We've been out there, like we've been putting in the work, and you're not gonna out bless God. Yes, <laughs> like sir. you cannot do that. And I'm not saying that we went in there with that intention. We did mm -hmm. it. Yeah, we went in in the intention that we're gonna win our city. That was mm -hmm. our our main goal. It wasn't say, hey, you know what? I'm gonna scratch your back, God, so you scratch mine. It was never that. What it was is that we wanted to be apostolic in action. Mm -hmm. We just didn't want to be a name only. And so we wanted to to bring the gospel to the streets of Warden. And so that's what we started doing. We yes, started sir. going out there, knocking on doors, praying for people, inviting them to church, building up relationships and, and all this. And through all of this, God really seen that this young man, it was not a, oh, you know what, I'm going to go to New Zealand so I can get 100 likes on my Instagram. Mm -hmm. Or I'm going to go to New Zealand because I always wanted to go see the sites over there. No, yeah. I'm going to New Zealand because this is where you called me. Mm -hmm. And I've been putting in work here and I'm ready to take my practice and my training and actually mm -hmm. go in the field and use it. You yes, know sir. what I'm saying? And so God honors that. And I'm telling you, you know, do it. Whatever God has really been placing on your heart to do, do it. Yes, sir. I mean, like, like I was telling you the other day, I heard a missionary, um, 
a burden for a city is not going to happen on a plane. You're not going to hop on a plane and have a burden for a country if you don't have a burden for your own city. Yeah. And I mean, these people are warning. These are my, this is my heartbeat. Like I have to reach these people. Cause like you said that Sunday, if these people go to hell, that's not on them. It's on me. Yeah. Cause I have this, I have this free gift that I can give away. I mean, I have multiple of it to give away. It's not something that to limit the supply, but this is for you. Yeah. Like the Bible says all 120 were filled with the Holy ghost in the upper room. Yeah. So it's for everybody. It's for everybody. And I have to give this out. I have to, this is something that I have to do. This is not something that, well, I want to do it too, but I have to do This is something that I need to do. Yeah. So when I got my minister license, I told brother Lewis, Brother Hughes, I said, I'm indebted to this. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to be saved. That's what people miss about Jesus Christ. You act like Jesus needs you at the table. He don't need you at the table. He wants you at the table, but he don't need you at the table. Humble yourself. Yes, sir. Humble yourself and realize that. And so when I realized that he didn't have to save me, he didn't have to pick me up Mm -hmm. when I fall. He didn't even have to forgive me. In fact, the Apostle Paul says, how can the clay tell the potter what to do? Mm -hmm. So if he don't want to forgive me, who am I to tell him? He's not obligated. Yeah. But he is faithful to his word. And if his word said, I repent, be baptized in his name, then I have the remission of sins and I shall be filled. Yes, sir. And so this is what happened. And there's other people, there's people out there that don't realize that and don't know that because They've been a slave yeah. to drugs so long, or they've been in bondage to, you know, this this world for so long. Mm-hmm. They don't think that there's a God that loves them and that's willing to forgive them. They're just looking for the messenger to go out there, and so that's what we chose to do. We chose to be the messenger. We didn't want to mm-hmm. just, you know, shout on Sunday and forget about the 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 city we're in on Monday. Yeah. You know, we actually wanted to to do this, and I actually seen it. Like I prayed. I, we have Tuesday night prayer at the church, and I asked. Um, Sister Lupe, I said, you know, let's pray for Josh, but I pray for favor in high places, mid places, and low places. Mm-hmm. And they say, you know, here he goes. He's texting me, brother Solis, you'll never, you'll never, uh, like you had one individual give you what, a thousand dollars? Yeah. But it's one individual. Yeah. Just one individual just, just randomly, and the Lord told him to send him. And he calls me and tells me about that. He tells me about the living proof of a loving God. He tells me, he, he calls me and sends me a picture of the letter. Then he tells me about this this business owner. Mm. Now this wasn't a worker. This was a business owner that goes into the cleaners and says that he wants to play pay for Josh's plane ticket because he's seen the tip jar. Mm. You know. Then Josh telling me, "Hey, my boss man sends me a picture of the tip jar." You know. And then he got people there, and we did outreach for resurgence, and we're knocking on doors, and people recognize him from the cleaners. Like, oh man, so. You know, he's very much living this thing out. So don't think that this is going to be no fairy tale. Like, yeah. God's just going to drop something in your lap. You know, you do got to get up and you got to yeah. show that you want it. You know what I'm saying? And God will honor it. I'm mm-hmm. telling you, he will. But, you know, close close hands, man, close mouth, all that stuff don't get fed. Yeah. You know, you got to you gotta get out there and you got to show that you want it. Exercise your faith, man. And it's just been a blessing to really just see this man come from somebody who was mad at God, wanted to get revenge, I guess, mm-hmm. for the lack of a better word. Or maybe that's the right thing. Oh, that was the right thing. Against God to saying, you know what? I appreciate you for forgiving me. I appreciate you for loving me. Mm. Use me. Yeah. If you want to use something, here I am. Yes, sir. I got to back off. So, And, young brother, I, I, you, <laughs> you inspired me, bro. <laughs> You're hey. awesome, bro. Just, inspire me too, but just Solis. seeing that that bounce back, man, is just awesome. You know, I can never thank Jesus Christ enough for the blood, man. Yes, sir. I can't. Why he chose to forgive me, I don't know. Yeah, but I thank God that he did. Brother Cisco, um, the pastor of the church, triumphant. Yes, sir. Uh, I think it was about a, the week I went. Uh, he said, "If God has the ability to forgive me, then I have the uh, the sense to go back and ask for it again." Yeah. And I mean, like you said earlier, may, uh, many are called, few are chosen. Yeah. And the only way to be chosen. To answer the phone because the phone can ring, it can ring, but whenever you say, Okay, God, well, I'm gonna do this, yeah, instead of just saying, oh, posting on Instagram, Hey guys, I'm a preacher, yeah. and it's, yeah, that's good, but when are you gonna start showing your community, Hey, this is for you, yeah, that's for, so definitely, man. Thank you, brother, for joining us. Appreciate you for sharing that testimony with us. Thank you for encouraging the listeners. I got one thing to say real quick before you end it off. All right, brother. Go ahead. If you want to get you some Coffee in the Truth merch, this man's coming out with, look at this cup right here. Look. Get you one for your grandma who likes her coffee. Show him that right there. Oh. Ooh-wee. 
That's I nice. I can't take full credit for that tumbleweed. Thank you very much. And then you got some t-shirts coming out too? Oh, yeah. I got some shirts just like this. So y'all stay ready. We're going we're gonna to try to expand. Drop coming soon, it's baby. It's coming soon. It's coming soon. Well, y'all already know the coffee's running low. So me and the goat. Got to go. We gots to go. We love y'all. Stay encouraged. We out.